Hi everyone, welcome back to the Sunday video. Now I was not going to talk about a COVID topic uh, for the Sunday video, but I just read an excellent paper published in Nature, and it's about how a cheap old liver drug could potentially prevent COVID. Now I haven't seen this study being covered in mainstream media, and none of my YouTube colleagues are talking about it. So I'm taking the first jab here. Let's get started. Now first, we are not here to talk about some other more controversial alternative COVID therapy. I want to tell you about a paper that is so thoroughly and nicely done to examine the hypothesis and validate the potential mechanism of how this cheap drug could be the key to preventing COVID using cell, animal, human lung tissue, and epidemiology data to prove their points. This cheap drug is called Adigo or Ursodio, commonly known as Ursodeoxycholic Acid. This is an off-patent drug approved to treat primary biliary cholangitis, which is a chronic disease in which the bile ducts in your liver are slowly destroyed. This drug compound was initially found in bear bio juice, but has been produced synthetically since the 1950s. I'm so fascinated by the origin of this drug because for hundreds of years, bear bio juice was used in ancient China to treat various liver and gallbladder conditions. And I remember growing up reading ancient China novels where martial artists would carry a bottle of bear bile juice as an antidote. However, I must emphasize that it is totally not okay, totally unethical to harvest bear bile juice for any reasons in today's world. That is why we have this compound made in the lab in today's world. Back to the study. The study began with a good hypothesis. The authors knew that SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus uses the ACE2 receptor on the cell surface to gain entry and open the doorway to infection. This mechanism is conserved and has not changed in all the variants since the original strain. Vaccine-induced, infection-induced, and monoclonal antibodies work by binding to the spike protein to prevent them from attaching to ACE2. But what if we could get rid of ACE2, or the door, so the virus wouldn't be able to find a way in? It turned out that a transcriptional factor known as the Phanasoid X receptor, or FXR, regulates the expression of ACE2 receptors. If there is a way to reduce FXR, then ACE2 expression should be reduced. Luckily, we have an FDA-approved drug, Ursodio, that can decrease the level of FXR and therefore the level of ACE2 in cells. Now the question is, how did the researcher test to see if Ursodio can prevent viral infection by lowering the number of doors that allows viral entry? First, they started with test tubes and cell experiments. They showed that when the cells were treated with ursodio at a concentration similar to what humans achieve in their blood after standard dosing, were less likely to be infected by SARS-CoV-2. The dose is the key here. They used a realistic dose that is translatable to clinical use, not some random high dose that we'll never be able to achieve. This graph stained the spike protein with red, and you can see that when FXR is inhibited by ursodio, there is a lot less spike protein binding to the cells. Not bad, but cells are not humans. So the researchers moved up the ladder and started their animal studies using mice and Syrian golden hamsters. Now they didn't just randomly choose little these little furry cute animals. Now, in fact, mice and golden hamsters, or Syrian golden hamsters, are easily infected by human COVID and have been used in many other COVID-related studies. There were two groups. The uninfected mice rat group was treated with the control vehicle. Similarly, the uninfected mice in the blue group were treated with ursodio. 
Then they put a COVID-infected mouse into each box. They saw that the mice treated with ursodiol were less likely to become infected, and they also had a lowered level of ACE2 in their nasal passages. Pretty good, but mice are not little humans, so let's move up the level again using human lung tissues. The research team then used perfused human lungs that had been declined for transplantation. Now, these lungs were perfused with a special nutrient liquid to keep them alive and were also mechanically ventilated. One lung was treated with ursodiol and the other was a control. They showed that ACE2 level decreased in the ursodiol treated lung after sample tissues from both lungs were exposed to the virus. The lung tissue with ursodiol had lower levels of viral infection. So far, everything has panned out and supported their hypothesis. If it were a regular paper, it would have stopped here. But this one was published in the top tier journal, Nature. So there was more to the story. They recruited eight human volunteers to take ursodiol for five days. And they saw ACE2 levels in the nasal passages went down over the course of treatment. They also reconfirmed their results using a proteomic database containing several hundred people who had received ursodiol for clinical reasons. And ursodiol treated people had lower levels of ACE2. Finally, they looked at an epidemiological data set with information on over 1,000 patients with liver disease who had contracted COVID-19. 31 of them had been receiving ursodiol. After adjustment for baseline differences, those who received ursodiol were less likely to be hospitalized, require an ICU, or die. Let's take a break here. You can tell that I'm so impressed by this study. And this is how a drug repurposing study should be done. They started with a well-defined hypothesis and tested each step at a time. And every step is providing evidence that reinforce the central theme. And this study has really paved the way for clinical trials. Now let's come back to the real world. Is that going to change how the official recommend COVID treatments and prevention anytime soon? No, we're not in March 2020 anymore. And there are stakeholders with commercial interest in COVID treatments, such as Paxlovid. Like considering the U.S. government is paying Pfizer more than $500 for each course of treatment, and when Paxlovid goes to private market in 2023, it is going to cost two to three times more without insurance. That is a lot of money. And the truth is that a cheap off-pattern drug such as ursodiol is going to face a lot of pushback from the big pharmaceutical industry. We are pretty sure that COVID is not going to go away anytime soon. So it is not difficult to get patients to participate in large, randomized, placebo-controlled clinical trials to study if ursodiol could prevent or treat COVID. Hopefully, we will see that from academic researchers in the near future. Basically, we will all have to live with COVID for a very long time, if not forever. So I firmly believe the more inexpensive safe and effective options we have for this disease, the better for everyone on earth. That is all for this week. So I keep hearing a lot of people are getting non-COVID upper respiratory illnesses like the one I got, uh, what, two weeks ago. Um, so please stay warm and stay healthy these days. And uh, meanwhile, please take care. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.